very much, uh, Dr. Ransom, for the eloquent uh, paper that you're presenting about the research uh, you carried out. I would like to call the timekeeper, please. Can you appoint the timekeeper? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you help us in that role? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to remind fellow oh, no, that finish. the topic for the I panel discussion the tonight is about why is it difficult to get academic jobs in Denmark? And uh, the next speaker uh, for tonight will be Mr. Celestine Fouca. And I have a question to this gentleman, which is about the discussion that we just had in our forum prior to this debate tonight. Could you, uh, honorable gentleman, try to tell us what is your understanding of academic jobs and whether this term academic jobs can be used interchangeably with skill jobs and academic related jobs <laughs> yeah uh, that is actually a very good question and i think that a few of us have brainstormed on the question prior to this debate because i saw on the net People saying that we should specify this as professional jobs, some saying that we should specify it as academic jobs, and some, I mean, lots of things coming up. But I think when we talk about academics, we refer it to, it's an umbrella of the whole studies in an entity. When I talk about whole study and entity, I mean that if you have been trained as a professional, how did you become a professional? You write something, you did something in school before you specialized in something. And then you fall under the umbrella of academics. If you are highly skilled, like doctor is here, highly skilled, I mean, he has read something. So when we talk about academics, I think, to the best of my knowledge, it covers almost everything. Professional jobs, engineering, whatever thing. But if you limit it to say only skilled jobs, it means that maybe those who are not qualified in certain professions and they are educated may actually be relegated to the background. And in that case, our debate will be narrowed towards a, spe a specific set of people and not to the whole society. And the paper here Thank mentioned you. a certain percentage that the doctor presented of people who are found that the, the research shows that there are certain people who are that the, the immigrants in Denmark have a basic minimum qualification, which means that they're actually educated. And with that, that education, they're academically right to do whatever thing they are doing because the dance have that same qualification and they're doing it. But the problem now becomes, or the problem now is, what he has answered by saying that because most of them are actually uh, involved in these sectors of just real basic education that is needed to sell through the economy. And when we are coming in, because we lack the cultural integration, because we lack the real integration in terms of language, because we lack uh, what we call, what multinational companies target as the first uh, prerogative in penetrating in, into any society is, study, is to study the culture. Take for instance, he talked about the migration, the outsourcing of uh, Danish companies abroad. If a Danish company is getting into China, the first thing the Danish company is going to do is, uh, is actually going to first, how do the Chinese behave? How do they react? How do they perceive this product? And how do we make them our brothers and sisters in order to sell this product? That is the first thing. And it comes back to us in terms of this question he has raised and in terms of the question whether it's possible to get a job or easy or not. Whether we ourselves have started the Danish uh, uh, culture as our prerogative to penetrate or not. Uh, Mr. Fuka, I have to jump in a little bit here now. Uh, Mr. Chicken, do you agree with uh, the view that you <coughs> just raised? Well, uh, for me, it's very clear. If you take it from the Danish language, they say, Fali or Ufali Abaya, which means either you are uh, working on uh, a qualified job. This, on skilled level and skilled level, and you have academics. So that distinction is very clear. So we don't have to make so much uh, discussion about that point for me, in my opinion. Anyway. Is there another member of the panel who has a different view here? 
I really do not have a different view, but I just want to corroborate what these two many gentlemen have talked about academic jobs. Uh, if you look at the Danish Green Card, it is aimed at attracting those who have studied extensively. And that is why they've introduced a point-based system to be able to get these skilled migrants or those who have studied extensively into Denmark so they can use their knowledge to help improve the economic of Denmark. So if we call it academic job, I don't find any problem in this. Because you get points to have completed high school. You get points to have completed your first degree. Points to have had a master's degree and so on and so forth. Now, you are skilled if you decide to enroll into maybe engineer high school. Engineering high school, how do you say it? Engineering high school. You get, you get out from that institution with a profession, with a skilled profession, but then you will not be qualified. You may not be qualified to obtain the green card if you were a foreigner. Why? Because you may not get the points that are required for you as an act, as to cover this academic aspect of it. So the Danish institution that came up with a green card system, which is a point-based system, considered those to be qualified for this system to have gone to school extensively, meaning they must have obtained an education to be qualified. So there is a distinction between skilled, to an extent, and academic jobs. So we can hardly use them interchangeably, though we can sometimes use them. But in this particular case, I find nothing problematic in talking about skilled, I mean, talking about academic jobs, if it's difficult to obtain them in Denmark. Because first, like I said, the Danish Green Card is based on point system. And the higher your academic level, the more advantages you have to obtain the Green Card. Thank you. Uh, please, you just hold your peace. We will take questions from the audience at the end of uh, the final discussion. Um, the very learned doctor pointed out about some uh, debates about talents, some controversy about which kind of degree, which kind of professional qualification you have. And this debate has not been raised today. It's an age-old debate, as all as you have had the beginning of learning. The conflict between single subjects, traditional subjects, and professional qualifications. And uh, we would like to ask this question now to Mr. Sama Aaron. What he perceives to be the differences between these two and how they can constitute a difficulty for Cameroonians to be able to assess the labor market in Denmark. Could the fact that a lot more Cameroonians, they go the way for fundamental courses, single subject courses, play against them than if they went in for professional courses? Over to you, Mr. Aaron. Yeah. Um, well, um, first of all, if we have to, to look at these two terms, we have to first of all look at the society in which we are applying these two terms towards. In my own point of view, in Denmark, they have just two basic divisions that they have put it. Skilled and unskilled. So, whether something is academic or something is highly skilled, those terms do not exist in this society. Um, in, in, in Denmark, the way they train the, 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 the students in school in Denmark is that you, you, you go to learn a profession, a profession that will earn you, uh, will earn you a, a specific skill that can be used in a specific domain. Um, in Denmark, the term academic is mostly used for people who want to remain in the universities or who want to take on administrative positions in the government. This is how it is used in the society. So, my experience, having lived in Denmark for a very long time, 
and having been in the job finding process with up to about five years working experience in Denmark, changing from one job to another, I only know of if you are making your CV, you have to put your skilled qualifications and you have to put your personality qualifications. And if, if, if you are unskilled, then you have to stress more on your personality qualifications because there is no an employer who will employ you for your being unskilled. So everything is skilled. If you, are, if you, if you, if you take, if you take a, a, a cleaning job, there are educational programs arranged to educate people in cleaning please, to sir, have skill. Uh, please let me jump in a little bit. Sorry, I have to jump in a little bit. Do you agree that there are worthless qualifications and useful qualifications? Um, there is no worthless qualification. The, uh, every qualification you take is useful, but it's a, it's a matter of, of uh, what importance it has in this society. So there is nothing like useless. If you if you have a qualification and you cannot use that qualification in Denmark, please, what you have, you have knowledge. You can take something that is useful in Denmark, which is closer or something that your brain can can switch to very easily and apply it to this society. Don't stick into your your one single subject programs that you have, which will never be. Be, qualify you for anything in this society. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, thank you. You see, um, the reality of uh, the battle, or you can call it the war for talent, or the mismanagement for talent, resides in exactly what uh, companies and governments are doing at the back because they tend to define the modus operandi. So, uh, Mr. Aloysius uh, Aka, I would like you to weigh in on this very uh, difficult issue about those traditional degrees and vocationalism can they be a, can, can that be a problem exactly why it could be difficult to get access to the labor market in Denmark uh, in my humble opinion not at all because when you look at the academic ladder you realize that uh, it is even more difficult back in Africa when you have a degree in history in the West, you can easily switch to do a, me a medical degree after that. In Africa, it may be difficult. In the West, it is. So, in my opinion, looking at this debate topic, I hold the opinion that uh, following the situation on the ground in Denmark, much of the blame, about 70% of the blame of why we don't find professional jobs in Denmark, I will levy it on us <coughs> and not on the government or the system in Denmark. Job seeking is an entire job, full-time job on its own. Seven and a half hours a day, three, seven hours a week. <laughs> what happens with us in Denmark? Now, we don't devote enough time to look for jobs. Some of the best human resource consultancies in the world have proven from their research that for you to say you are looking for a, a job, you call yourself a job seeker, you are supposed to send out at least 1,000 to 1,500 applications before you say you are getting into the job market. Now, if I look into this hall and I ask honestly, who has sent out even 1,000 applications, I don't think there will be any. So we are actually, we are actually, we are actually not seeking in Denmark. Me. No, the status of the in the United States. What I'm saying is that we are actually not seeking, we are not looking for these jobs. This is the first point I wish to raise. We blame uh, the system and the tennis system and the corporate system on this. The, the next point I wish to raise is... Mr. Haka, sorry, I have to uh, jump in there. Actually, uh, thank you for your views. Uh, like I said before, we have uh, five major uh, questions here, which are main questions, which are actually directed to uh, each uh, honorable member of the uh, panel. Uh, the idea is that um, as we go along, I might have to call some other member of the panel to weigh in as uh, a B uh, response to the main question. So uh, we'll have to stay with uh, respect the rigor of time. And I'll ask that we move to the third question, which actually locates also his point of departure from what Dr. Ransom said. 
um, he was able to mirror a number of uh, arrangements within the economy and within the political build-up. So the question is whether um, we feel that the economic arrangements and the political setup in Denmark today, that is the, 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 the superstructure. That is the, the macro environment. Well, it has some consequences to do in enabling or blocking access to labor market. So this question goes to Mr. Terry Young. Uh, I would say every community got its modus operandi. And uh, we come from different backgrounds. If we are called immigrants, it's definite that we need to integrate. And if we need to integrate, it's because we have stumbling blocks. Meaning the structure we've met in place is one that deters us from breaking through. So we need to do something to break through. By this, I would say yes to foreigners who are coming into Denmark, they are meeting a structure that serves as an impediment for them to realize their goals. So what they have to do is to break through. And how do we break through? Doctor has given us some tips. But again, I want to say that social anthropologists have proven through research that immigrants are in no way a perfect match to native-born citizens when it comes to gaining opportunities where they belong. So it's, it's I mean, it goes to stress further that there is no way someone will get into a foreign land and be able to get it just that easy as if this were their own land. So every country, every nation have structures that suit their own people. And that is what I believe. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chicken, you wanted to say I, in? Yeah, I think I would not look at it that way like they are impediments. Uh, what is important to me is as, uh, that people should look at the structures that are in place in Denmark as a challenge because when you leave Cameroon and you're traveling out to Cameroon, you have a goal, you have a mission. I don't think anybody just found himself in Denmark without contemplating why he or she is in Denmark. And when you are coming to Denmark, from my opinion, I believe anybody has made a research, where am I going to, where am I heading to, what are the structures in that country? Do you understand? So we come in a system, it's a welfare system, a lot of terminology integration you need to understand all those terminology it means a lot to a normal danish but we as foreigners we don't understand it we use the word foreigners here in danish terminology we don't use foreign they are foreigners they are um, uh, refugees they are people who are here because of the pool or the push factor pool factor means that people who are coming here because of economic those who are coming because they are forced the push factor because of political we are here for many reasons and all those reasons have an implication on what we want those who came like refugees because they don't have a choice, they can say, okay, we were forced to be here because we had a situation we were running from. But if you willingly decided that Denmark is my destination, then it was up to you to, under to make a research to understand where am I going to, what are the structures in this country. And when you reach here, it's your benevolent opportunity and right to go in and do what you think will be best for you to gain what you want. It's like the colonial days when the white man came to Africa. They used wine and uh, bullets and they convinced our grandparents and they took our land and they convinced them in a good way. So equally, I'm telling you guys, this is recolonization. When you come here, it's important for you to understand the terrain in which you are. Understand the loopholes of that terrain go in, master them, and when you master them, you stand a good opportunity to go in and do something. That's my question. Yeah, Mr. Cornelio, thank you. That reminds me of something. 
what Mr. T just said. And it is that we communions, one of the main reasons, in my opinion, why we don't find jobs is that communion, educated communions work with a lot of divided minds. You are in Denmark today, you don't want to look at the society and say, okay, how do I have, okay, I have a degree, I have a master's degree in history, but there's an opportunity in social work. Can I go to your social work school for many months? No. You are looking at your people. Then you are looking at the money as well. What I'm saying. If we could look around the other way, I'm, not, I'm thinking I'm going to Canada, I'm going to the United States. We are not focused. Believe me, if you go to the came to Denmark and say, I'm going to make my life in Denmark, they will make it big time. We, we don't know whether we are going to the UK or to the US or Canada or we are still in Denmark or we are going back to Sweden. We are just confused. And considering the fact we have very strong academic backgrounds, we don't want to stay here cleaning. So we don't, we don't even know where to focus. And I think there's a big problem among other people. Uh, do you think, uh, Mr. No. Do you think uh, if the environment here, if the climate here, the circumstances here, were such that uh, we're not concerned about no. being in place, we can rather have been forced to think no. about COVID. Because uh, uh, we have to understand that the issue of mobility, uh, a job search, it's not only a preserve of Denmark, it's everywhere. And you should understand that we have been in programs here where we are studying, where we have had Americans and British who have been coming here in Denmark, also for education. Mm -hmm. You study the trend of international mobilities like that. You have those who are else, elsewhere seeking opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mr. Celestine uh, Fuka, would you uh, have something to say about uh, this uh, macro environment? Yeah, if you if you look at it in total, I'll please that you should give us a little bit of time because we are really here to disseminate the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> what they have talked about uh, the structures and impediments to me, I look at it to be very minute. If you look at it from the macroeconomic point of view, we are looking at it as an environment. And what is an environment from economic perspective? Point number one, if you look at the Keynesian theory, <laughs> the Keynesian theory simply states that in an economy where the natural rate of unemployment is below or above the natural rate, there is a problem. Okay. And there is a problem now. Sure. What is the problem? The problem is that there is a recession. And in this recession, in economic terms, we have what we call four variables that we take into consideration. Mm -hmm. The variables are <coughs> consumption. And he mentioned in his paper that the foreigners constitute only 7%, which means 93% are the Danish. Or other nationals. Or other, other, no, foreigners. Yeah, foreigners. Yeah, foreigners. Yeah, foreigners. Do the Danes consume as they used to consume? It is a natural factor. They have restrained from consumption. Do, do companies invest? They have restrained from investment. He asked for a loan. They never gave him. It is not, like, not only him. Banks actually do not lack money, but they hold money because there is no trust in each other interbank system. And because of this failure of banks to trust each other and individuals to trust each other, money is being hoarded by every part of the economy. And that being said, there is a fall in investment. And therefore, there is a fall in an injection of money into the economy. When there is a fall in an injection of money into the economy, it means that Companies and uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, they are grounded. How do you then expect an economy to boom when all these sectors have been grounded? That is a natural factor. And that is what we're saying. Point number two I want to mention here is, particularly on the days themselves, research has shown that the days are not even sure of the jobs they have. Not to talk about looking for a job tomorrow. And therefore, if you carry out an interview on all Danish people, the rate they used to spend in 2007, 8, 9, 10 is not the rate they are spending today. And if, you don't, if they don't spend, and you go into the banking system, because we don't understand the language as most of us know, if you get into England, 
you see that the strategy that the English government is using now to boom the economy is to release money to individuals and to small and medium-sized enterprises to open up shop, open up businesses, and therefore regenerate aggregate demand in the economy. And therefore the economy will boom. And Denmark is not an exception. And as he said, the situation is a little bit improving now because the economy as of the last quarter was 4.2 and today it stands at 4.3 rate of unemployment. Therefore, there is something actually a little bit better for us to get about this. So the two things I've talked about is the Keynesian theory, which we need to learn about it, which is the natural endowment of the whole economy. I mean, when I talk about an economy in the world in which Denmark is under reception that has affected us here, and that is what he's talking about. And point number two, is that there has been a fall in total consumers' consumption, which is actually what is supposed to regenerate and expand the economy. That these are two major points in relation to this yeah, question. Does, does anybody in the panel have something to weigh in on that uh, same point? Yeah. I think one of my major points is I think we should go back to the root cause of this debate. Why is it that you guys or we educated are not having jobs in Denmark? It's not only because the economic crisis came, it came a few years ago, it's not a reason why we don't have jobs. So let's not only qualify that we don't have jobs because of there's a potential problem. I want us to sit here and talk about those potential problems. What are the problems we are facing in the arbeit market or in the, in the work or in the job market? What are the problems we are facing as foreigners? You understand? We have to identify those problems here and say what are the remedies? Because if we start to talk about the problems Denmark is having and the problem that the world economy is having, we we'll live here without achieving our goal. Let's concentrate on what we, as a resource, we have to offer, and we have a problem to get into the about to get into the work market in Denmark. What is the problem? You guys also can come up with the problems you have. No point of intervention. Sorry, yeah. I think that the moderator. We are answering a question. Yeah pertaining to the questions yeah. asked, and yeah. therefore the individual, excuse me, and therefore the problems yeah. that are raised, yeah. he raised a question yeah. and we answer the question the way it is. Yeah. You don't need to give him information that he has not asked for. Yeah. Therefore, when you come to those yeah. specificities yeah. that we are supposed to answer, who we'll answer them the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. So can you leave him to get to those questions and we we'll answer them? Yeah, 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 the truth is that uh, all members of the panel, they are right in the way they right defend their own issues, and I appreciate that. <laughs> but like uh, Mr. Ken has just said, we move to the fourth question of the discussion tonight, and which actually goes deep into the crux of uh, this, uh, this contention. And this question is addressed to you Mr. Aka Alois. And the question is that the job seekers themselves, with the Meronians, are we proactive enough? Do we do the necessary things to be able to shake off this problem of joblessness, this problem of difficulty to assess? The digital market. Now, if the answer is yes, what are those things that we do which are the wrongs? Thank you. Uh, I think the answer is no. In my opinion, we don't do. En in my opinion, we don't do enough. As I just mentioned in passing, the number of positions are still set and we don't work enough. Doctor Ransom mentioned it. There is a problem. Another problem we have. I realize it's not only in Denmark. When you come in, when you relocate, the person who receives you, and subsequently the people you become close to, influence your life without you knowing, and most often they deviate your entire ambitions. This happens practically in Denmark. If I receive, if, so, if I receive somebody in Denmark, and that person is looking up to me, that this is a, an educated Cameroonian, and then I get close to that person, the only thing cleaning. I'm hoping from one cleaning job to another. I'm not thinking of how to use my degrees. I don't care to know how the jobs are look, jobs are being sick in Denmark. I don't care to know that I should go and study Danish. I don't care to go to a commune and find out the possibilities. And that person looks up to me and starts thinking cleaning. What happens is that the first consequence is that I've derailed that person without that person even knowing because that person does not think that he, he, he or she has forgotten of his or her ambition. The next thing is that you find yourself here two, three years you are cleaning. Forty years you are cleaning. You forget that you don't have a degree. 
And the incentive in this delay is the money will end. The money will end. So in my opinion, we don't do enough in uh, order to get jobs. Yeah, uh, Dr. Russell just pointed out about uh, networks. And uh, maybe I'll add that uh, top up post educational skills. How many CVs per week, like you pointed out, whether we're prepared, if there's no job here in Copenhagen, whether we're ready to go to all who's at SBI, seeking opportunities, could, could you see this as some of the problems which actually uh, could be a concern for Cameroonians and could be a setback? Honestly, it is. The problem is we don't even seek to, to discover that these are the problems that we have. Because it is until you mm -hmm. really want a job that you realize that probably it is better to relocate to Orbo or to Orbo. But if you are just thinking of a cleaning job and you are not even struggling to get a career-oriented job, then you just find yourself around Copenhagen where there will be more cleaning jobs. So who has uh, uh, Mr. Aaron? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, um, issues like this, I'm here to find solutions too, just like any of us who have come here. So, the issue is uh, really that we are not uh, doing enough to penetrate the system. I will say so because I have a, a, a model here that I Due to my thinking, you know, as engineers, we always come up with model because we have to de de design things. So I have made a model, a, a concentric circle model, which is like two circles, one circle inside another circle. When people come to Denmark and they are lucky to get something, some of them, they get academic jobs or skilled jobs. Some of them, they get unskilled jobs. They remain on the outer sketch of of the circle. They remain somewhere <laughs> inside this circle. And inside that circle, Denmark is not well represented because the Danes use the outer circle because they want to approach the international community because Denmark is only five point something million and they want to also know the outside world. So they made a rule that every day should speak English, every day should be internationally inclined so that if they go outside, they can be able to integrate outside. And when we foreigners, we come into Denmark, we want to stay in that outer circle. Yes, there's a lot of jobs. You can get jobs in the outer circle, but sooner or later you are out and it will be difficult for you to get a job again. So what do you do? If you want to stay in Denmark and make up your mind to stay in Denmark, I'm using myself as an example, there are two things you have to do. There is no doubt, I don't have any doubt about Cameroonians and, concerning uh, academic uh, jobs. Sorry, Mr. Aaron, I have to jump in there. What errors? What errors are we making? Yes. What is doing? Yes. What yes. What what errors errors is Cameroon? yes. Cameroonians, Cameroonians have very good qualifications. Very good. There is something we are lacking, and that is what I'm coming. That's the point I'm going to. We are lacking the fact that we live in a foreign country which has a language and which has a culture. Statistics have shown that the Danish employment market puts much, much emphasis on their language and their culture, as Dr. Ran said has, has put, uh, shown us on one of the slides, and which is a mere fact. Now, when we come and we don't, we don't penetrate the system to be inside the innermost circle, in short, all the Danes are inside this circle. And if you want to be there, you will never lack a job. If you find yourself there, if you, find yourself there you will never lack a job. For example, a Cameroonian finishes from the university and has a PhD or a master in whatsoever. Now, he still wants to look for another master degree to have another master degree. He wants to have another professional qualification. No, there is a lot of personality skills we are lacking. We don't know the language of the system. We don't know the culture of the system. We don't, uh, know our, uh, each, each, we don't even know ourselves as part of this society. So we have to penetrate the system with, our, with 
to learn the culture of this society, and the Denny system has made in place a lot of opportunities for us to learn. For example, people who have come out of, uh, uh, of the university and they are, they are on Daopenge or unemployment benefit, mm -hmm. there is six months course you can take on intensive Danish, uh, six weeks course you can take on intensive mm -hmm. Danish language and culture that will teach you purposely on the job market. Mm -hmm. There is further education, there are institutions. You can even save money and pay 6,000 uh, 6, kroner for intensive Danish language that they can even come to your home, there are institutions for this. If you want this, I can tell you. After I can give you the, 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 yeah. the information after, but this is how we can help ourselves. So if you stay out of this circle, you will never get a job in Denmark. I'm sorry. Stay in. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Aaron. What common errors are we making in our approach uh, to job search? What common errors? Who has a different view? Yeah. Uh, I have two points I want to make. The first is uh, I want to commend ACA to have organized uh, uh, a workshop on CV writing. And uh, yeah. in that workshop, I happened to be a participant. This workshop was advertised widely using all possible media to put lay hands on or yeah. academic administration to lay hand on. I was fortunately a participant and I learned a lot in this workshop. I repeated one thing that this was meant for us Cameroonians and I could count less than 10 Cameroonians in this workshop. And there's one very important thing this lady told us. We have individuals in Denmark and some days who do not know what a CV is. They have never written one, but they've been working all their lives. What is the tool they are using to get these jobs? Networking. Now, this workshop was kind of a network, but we failed to take advantage of it. If we decide to network, something we do not do, I believe it will be very possible for us to get jobs. Number two, there's an institution, or call it an organization in this country, that I learned when I moved here. How did I get this? Is because I tried to network. If you graduate from the university, uh, it's possible for you to enroll with these people and receive unemployment benefit without experience, without having worked one day of your life for a very long period. I went about asking and I got information. There are lots of Cameroonians who graduated from university in this country who know this, but chose the contrary. Maybe what I will get from this institution is 9,000 Danish krona. That is too small to keep me. But if I clean, I will earn 20,000 krona. So they choose to clean. <laughs> <laughs> but it's possible to get this unemployment benefit. Is it for up to two years? Three years. Three years. It used to be three, now it's two. Four years. Two. Four years. We all know. Yes. We all know. So it's possible for you to earn up to nine, ten, eleven thousands after school for three to four years working nothing. Why don't we grab this opportunity and then try to penetrate the system by learning the language which we know is a problem. It's a very, very major factor for us managing the system. Why don't we see this opportunity to be able to come up with a thousand applications yeah. in a month. Why don't we use this opportunity to earn this money and then try to get to where we're supposed to be in the system? So these are two major errors that I think we are making. Then the third one, I had a chat with somebody online and then they were saying, you will carry carton for how long? That is true. For how long are you going to clean? That is a good question. 
This community does not accept us. That is what we think and we believe. To an extent, it's true. But what have you done? It's a coincidence that we're seated here today. I'm seated here with my colleague. I'm unable to penetrate the system. But I found a colleague and four others in this community because I tried to network. We have come up with a consultancy which is called Quality Research for Consultancy and Growth. We brainstormed and we thought we could come up with this kind of an organization or an institution and then do research in different areas concerning even the lives of Cameroonians and other foreigners in this country. And we can get money from the system to carry out this research. That is some form of employment. And if this succeeds, then you'll be able to employ other Cameroonians. I am not saying that, I'm not like, you know, giving myself praise or giving ourselves praise. But it's just a tip for us to think twice. It's not difficult for us to open companies in this country. Each and every one sitting here can own a company. You can become self-employed and you can do something to keep yourself busy that will be of good to you. Do not think it's difficult because we lie down resigned to fate. It's difficult to do this. No, give a try and fail. If you fail to try, then you plan to fail. There are sections of Copenhagen where Cameroonians have themselves packed. Maybe Abesloon is one, Mobeham is one. <laughs> Uh, if you get to some of these places, after work, you know, we socialize. And that is your routine. So, we are contented. We seem to be complacent. This is the life. And there is no way forward. No, we can break through. So, let's not be complacent. Because we make 20,000 Danish kroner. Because we can erect mansions back home. No, let's try to, if we really need jobs, academic jobs, skilled jobs, we can do a lot of things. Network, take advantage of the institutions that can push you to do a lot of things. Thank you very much. So what can be done, what can be done to turn things around? What can be done to turn things around? And Mr. Terry has already begun foreshadowing this question. So, Mr. Chi Kenneth, what do you have to say about turning things around? I just want to go what you said about the, no. the, 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 uh, the union. In this country, it's a right, it's your legal right. If you graduate from university with a degree, the first three months you have a right to apply in the union and you have a, 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 a what do you call it? Ah, English. You, have, you have money directly from the union. And when you don't use that opportunity, start cleaning you put yourself in a very dangerous situation because you have a degree and you're cleaning. So at one point when you join the A castle and pay your duties or your A castle and after a year you want to collect A castle, they will tell you, okay, yeah, but you will be cleaning before so you can stick go and clean. They will stop your A castle. So it, it can be a short, as you said, it's a short, it's, it's an immediate, it's an immediate, immediate goal that, okay, I finished university, I have a degree, I can clean and earn 18,000. How long will you clean? But the point is, when you go to the air castle, the air castle, and you've never cleaned, the air castle will help you to have a job because that is the union you are entitled to because of your qualification. And when the union negotiates your contract, you don't go to negotiate a contract when you have a job. The union negotiates your contract with your uh, representant. They make, negotiate your contract. Then they tell you how the thing has been negotiated. And every year you have an increment. It's stated by the law. And in the long run, maybe you start cleaning, you have 18,000. But if you start a job with your degree, maybe you start from 15,000 or whatever, 18,000. But by five years, you're up to category something, you're earning 30 something thousand. You understand? You have job security, you have a pension, you have all the advantages, you have the security, you have insurance. So, what Terry said was a good uh, opportunity to understand the system, to get the opportunities from the system. It's your right. Another one is Dow Pain. Somebody is going to work, down pain is where I work. Somebody is going to work, he has back pain, he continues to go to work because he wants to impress his boss or whatever. If you seek, stop, go to two down pain, is your right? Instead, money, go there and you get the money from the state. What you're seeing. 
you don't have to kill yourself. And that's the problem with Cameroonians also. Because as you said, the, it's easy money with this uh, cleaning, you have easy money. But in the long run, if you have a degree, you're doing cleaning, you cannot do cleaning for five years without having uh, injuries. And those injuries, because you don't have an insurance for the first, you don't have a union, who gonna fight with you if you have a problem with the company? You don't pay a union, so nobody gonna fight. But he's a Danish man, he's cleaning, he has a union. And in the union he has an insurance. When he has a problem with a back pain, he fires with his union, he has compensation, 200, 300,000. And the doctors want to assess the degree of the damage. So it's very important for us to use that opportunity, apply for a union, be a member of a union. Very important. Upon your graduation with your degree. Very important. And then another point that I wanted to make, very important. Most of these statistics that we are seeing here, it doesn't include Cameroonians. It doesn't include Cameroonians. Cameroonians are one of the most resourceful people in this country. I have a lot of statistics from there. I met when this when I had this topic a lot. I did a lot of contact daily statistics. They don't have any statistics about Cameroonians. This statistics about Somalians, about uh, Tanzanians, about this and this and this. But we are looked upon as a, as a group, and we we suffer the difficulties that the because as you said this OCD and uh, Rob Wolf fund they do the research send it to the parliament and they make they use those research to make the laws but when they make the laws they affect common you and me who is educated in this country who wants to use the opportunity to contribute so my opportunity is what I'm suggesting is like what Terry said dance industry is do it has a fund where you can apply to, uh, to get uh, money money for to, to carry out a research. And I think it would be a very brilliant idea to carry out a research about Cameroonians who have, uh, uh, who have, who have uh, got their education in this country and who are not using it. Okay, another good example is Iranians and Afghanistan. They've, uh, they've made a lot of research. And it's because these particular individuals from those countries have spearheaded, spearheaded this research. The most uh, uh, in a foreign group in this country that is doing very well is Afghanistan. They come with Iraq, uh, Iran, Iranians. Why? Because they have guys who came here, used the opportunity to learn the language, uh, uh, came out with uh, degrees and made a research about their people who came here. What are they doing? Carry out. I have a paper here. If you guys want to see it, I will show all the papers. They made a lot of research, and then they made research. They compared guys who came came here, Iranians, the second generation, and third generation. Educated doctors, they never had jobs, moved to England, moved to USA, they made all the comparisons, brought back to the Danish government. That is a working document. The Danish government is like, what? Is this what has been going on this country? That is what I'm saying. We Cameroonians, we have. We, uh, you, in Africa, you guys, you are gold, but you don't want to use the opportunity. You are gold in this country, but you don't want to use it. Thank you. Uh, Honestly. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Mm. Chickenet. And uh, Mr. Terry, who have uh, had to say something about what can be done to turn things around. So we are still on that. What can be done to turn things around? Sure. Cameroonian uh, brothers have to make a plan A, or we want to have a backup plan B and a backup plan C. What can be done? Even Z and F. One point I would like to add to what uh, Alicia said. We should, he talked about asymmetric information and we should be careful with the information because as he said, if you come and land here and the first person gets to you and it's a person that has been ringering for five years or ten years, you may end up being a ringer for the whole of your life. Mm -hmm. So we should also be able to select the kind of information we get from those who are our close collaborators. At times I make myself in such a way that people may feel that I don't associate. At times I associate with those I feel that they can move along. But if I see that you are my good friend and you cannot move along, and you want to drag me behind, I just narrowly get away from you. With that, you know, <laughs> that is the system, and we have to operate in that particular way. What I'm saying is, select your information from your friends you have, and you should be able to carry a personal initiative. And the jobs we do, it is clear that we need the money, we need food on the table. At the same time, we lack the time to carry out and send out applications for jobs. I know somebody in England who has sent out 150 applications in an English-speaking country. What more about Denmark when you don't even know the language? So why do you have to complain? I can't be doing 
ringering and warehousing and complaining why I have not made an effort? This is a simple question. So what efforts have we made? So we should rethink about ourselves, re-strategize ourselves, and one of the questions that was raised here about single subjects and the professional courses we have here, I will identify that as a mismatch of abilities. What you have is an ability, but what the company needs is not attributed to what you have. And therefore, you need to do something to match the ability of the company. Have you tried those opportunities and see the niche that you have, which you can uh, ameliorate to get into the company? That's what you need to be thinking about. That is, that's what I have. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Sebastian. Dr. Ransom, you have been reaching Yes, I think... Uh, I'm really thrilled, you know, by uh, the quality of what we are getting from the panel. Uh, a couple of uh, things have actually been able to trick me, and I just think that I should just lay, I mean, uh, lay a little bit of emphasis on. Kenneth has made mention of something that tricks my mind. That, you know, Cameroonians in this community are an asset, but we fail to understand that. And I will give you uh, an experience that I've had also, and also a research that has been published by the Swedish government. What happens is th in that is that Sweden and Cameroon they don't have any bilateral relationship, nothing at all. Sweden does not give scholarship to Cameroonians, not at all. Sweden recently published a document which showed that amongst the African countries that are ac Sweden actually accepts students into. Cameroon is the country that has produced the highest number of master's degree students and the highest number of PhD students for the past five years. For the past five years. This report was presented in the Swedish parliament and they were thrilled. Where is this small Cameroon? It's even a French speaking country. They don't even consider us as an English speaking country. It's a French speaking country. Where have they been able to come about to be the top within Africa? We don't give them scholarship. We don't have no bilateral relations. It was an issue in the Swedish parliament. Second, Sweden actually spends 1.7 million Swedish krona to train a single PhD. But what happens is that all these foreign PhDs that they have trained, Cameroonians, within that country, none, none of them is working within Sweden. They have been exported to Canada, to UK, and to the United States. So the Swedish government is now asking itself, now we have lost 1.7 million Swedish corner for each Cameroonian, and none of them is in the country. It's a problem. It's a big problem. So we should consider ourselves an asset. I compliment what you said. This research has nothing to do with Cameroon. But Cameroon, within that microcosm of African immigrants, if mm. we project the same situation, Cameroon will come out to be very different from what I just presented here. Will be very, very different. My second point, please. We do not build any CVs by doing the 3D jobs that I mentioned here. You don't have any CV for doing that. No CV. You can earn 20,000 krona, but you don't have any CV. 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, someone will ask you, please present me your CV. I've got master's degree from Sweden, master's degree from Denmark. Where is your CV? 20 years, you cannot give an account of what you have been able to do. It's a waste. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start thinking that there's a need for us to be able to, be able to make sacrifices. And for me, how can we make sacrifices to break through? I'm giving also my personal experiences. Please, you can be able to volunteer in a company or in a corporation. When you volunteer or you go in as an intern, what happens? You learn the company culture, you learn the company language, you become a team member within that company. That company will never let you go. You volunteer for three months, you volunteer for six months. It's difficult to break in, to come in, but it will, the company will find it very, very difficult to let you go. But if you do not take the time to volunteer, volunteer without getting any pay, unpaid volunteering into companies, just make your application, your CV. Please, I, I have these skills, I want to join your company, but please, I don't want any salary. Okay. I want to volunteer for three months, six months. Come improve your skills as a Cameroonian. It's possible for you to break in, break through. I'll give you another example. I have been privileged once within my current university to sit in a recruitment panel. They were recruiting one staff. 
within the recruitment panel. I will tell you if there's discrimination or not within recruitment when hiring. I I have had a Iraqis and an Indian guy who have been hired in my university and they because these guys wanted to stick very very close.